I hate YouTube. I hate YouTube so much sometimes. So I made a stream, planned it, set it up so that it's the right camera, enter it, and nothing happens. And now that stream is just streaming and I cannot stop it. So I swear, I hate this so much. Not to be negative, but I'm just trying, as we're just hanging out here, I'm just trying to, you know, get rid of that stream that seems to be streaming still, but that I don't want to stream. Okay. Delete this. Now see what happens. Buongiorno. Okay, let's see what happens to that. Hello, you all. What a wonderful day, isn't it? Yes. I thought we would just do this because I don't have time on Sunday. So I thought we would try this somewhat different time. You know, different time, different place. Well, not different place, same place. But anyway. Question. How to fix slightly misaligned times no loop? Well, that's very difficult without a loop because you won't be able to see what you're doing. So it's actually quite hard um, to, uh, to do that while you don't have a loop. You see, it's a really like fine-tuned thing that even if there's a little bit of misalignment, then your, uh, your, your pen may not write very smoothly. So it's important that you do really see what you're doing. So without a loop, there isn't a whole lot uh, you 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 can do in 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 a way that actually um, ensures that you'll end up with a nib that writes very smoothly. So just saying that 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 is that is an issue. That is an issue. All right, that stream seems to have ended. Excellent. There's only ten minutes of work. Got anything else? No, I think that's it. Okay. So maybe we're there. All right. Hello, Ellen. Yeah, yeah. Editing lectures. Fun, isn't it? The online stuff. Yeah. Have you ordered from Amazon Japan before? If so, is it reliable? Um, I have not, but... I struggle with believing that anything coming from Japan would not be reliable uh, because usually they have incredibly fast shipping and it's usually very, very good. Like I've, I've had things come in from Japan that were here in a week and I've had things come in from the United States that took two weeks. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind recommending it even though I don't have personal experience. If anyone else does, then by all means let us know. Dr. Markland asks, what's the best pen to bring to a fight with a transformer? This ties into a conversation we had yesterday about the level of horror that the, that's represented by the Transformers movies. I have had very interesting nostalgic memories of the TV show in the 80s. The movies, the movies evoke other feelings in me that are not exactly nostalgic. What else? Yeah, yeah, maybe Brian Anderson is able to uh, to see these kinds of things without a loop. But a loop, you know, if you, a, a simple triplet, right? So a jeweler's loop doesn't have to be super expensive. Sorry, I just walked a bit, so I need to drink. Um, the you, you can probably get a reasonable loop for something like $20 or so. You can even get, like, I have bought loops on eBay from China for $2. I, 
are the optics fantastic? No. Will they serve their purpose? Absolutely. And it will definitely help you out. It's really not terrible, the quality. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I, I think you can, you can get something that, that might help you out. What's the difference between a Sailor 1911S and a Sailor Promenade? I have no idea. I have never seen a Sailor Promenade. So I'm going to look it up. Sailor Promenade. Yeah, that looks like it's a minuscule difference um, uh, in maybe in size or something. But I, I, again, I never even heard of a promenade. So I'll have to investigate. I wouldn't expect a huge difference. Quilladilic says, helps if the loop has a light. This is incredibly true. If you have a loop with a light, it will change your life. But make sure you get a good light because I've had cheap loops, very cheap loops that had a little LED pointing at the bottom. But the problem is when you shine, when you use that on a reflective surface like a nib, it reflects into your eye and it's, it's kind of blinding. So I have a loop, I don't have it right within arm's length, but it has, I think, six LEDs. It was a gift from someone six LEDs, but it's like a little ring light almost with, with a diffuser. And that's fantastic because you um, don't have any strong reflections when you use it, which is kind of nice. Good morning from Malaysia. Unrelated to fountain pens, but what phone do you use, recommend? Uh, well, I have a Samsung Galaxy S7 that I've had for a couple of years, and I'm still happy with it. I'm not exactly an expert on phones, though. I don't know if, I, if I'm the best person to provide phone advice, but I've been happy with it. Yeah. I think that's it, Nicholas. A sailor promenade walks out of the shop. That's it. It's just a more mobile pen. And not as swaggering as a sailor either. It's a more dainty promenade. I've had lots of pens that have had ink in them for years without use. Am I ruining them? Likely. Fountain pen ink is water and dye, and that water will slowly evaporate, leaving the dye to gunk up your feed. So fountain pens are not used to be inked up and they're not used for years. They're not designed, sorry, they're not designed, they're not meant to be used that way. So I would recommend cleaning them and and taking out the ink and, and storing them empty if you don't use them for a while. Platinum Curidas, do you like it? I haven't tried it yet. I heard a lot of issues about them breaking, but I, I haven't tried it yet, so I don't, I don't know. I think I should have one on the way, but I'm at this point, who knows what's on the way and what's not. I had a parcel coming in from Florida that um, was sent early in the when the pandemic started, and after three months, it was still not here. And right now, it's still not here. I think that was uh, sent early June, or a little later than the start of the pandemic, but early June, and it's now September, still not here. So, not that there was a curidas in it, but at this point, who knows what's underway and what's not. I know. Tamanuri Studio is doing great work. Your review was great. Do you have any plans to send additional pens to him? I wasn't necessarily planning on it, but um, he does do great work. So if I would want some sort of Arushi stuff done, I would have no trouble uh, considering him or uh, sending things to him. No. I'm studying for the New York bar exam. I have 23 days left to study. You're my study break. Well, I'm glad to be your study break. I thought we would just do this slightly different day, slightly different time, so that people in different parts of the world can also join in because sometimes it's so late or so early. Depending on how you look at it, that's kind of hard to join in. Uh, what else? Very curious. Have you ever had experience as a teacher? I would love to know your background. Well, that is my background in a nutshell. 
Um, I, I have, uh, I'm, I'm a psychologist. I did my PhD in cognitive psychology slash cognitive neuroscience. Depends a bit on where you blur the lines. Uh, and I've, I've been teaching since 2008. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm a college instructor in psychology. So I, I, I am a teacher just this morning. Well, afternoon. I was teaching intro psych, which is fun. I like teaching. I mean, that's why I'm. A, that's why I, I like. Like why I made this my career. But I, I, I enjoy that stuff. I enjoy, I enjoy doing it. So, that's roughly speaking my background. I can talk about it more if people want to. What's the longest one should let a filled pen sit without ink? Oh, sorry, without use. Sorry, with ink, but without use. I don't think there's a hard and fast rule. But I, I would, I would start to get nervous at about six weeks. I would start to get worried, I would say about two to three months. I, I, I would not do that, but I know people who do. I really try to only ink up about four or five pens at a time, and then I use them up. So I write them dry, and then I clean them and put them away, and then I ink up other pens. So that, that kind of works for me. But again, bear in mind, pens can get clogged. And it, that's not to say that they're then ruined, but it's not necessarily how you want them to be either. So I would be a little careful with, with leaving pens inked, but unused for a very long time. If you use them for even just, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds every day to at least keep something flowing, then maybe it's not so bad. But I wouldn't just let them sit, you know? Perfect time for Australia, 11 a.m. on Saturday. That's so neat. I just find it so weird that to, to think about these things because it's Friday night here. It's just, it's just fun to me. But then I'm pretty weird. Do you have any poor quality pen that you appreciate very much? Well, not, not really because I think if I would appreciate it, it wouldn't be very poor quality. Um, I have inexpensive pens that I enjoy, like the uh, the Opus 88 Omar. I always like that one. It's, uh, I had to take them out. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's gonna take a sec. Where is it? Here. This is not super expensive. I mean, it's not a $5 pen either, but I mean, this is a very affordable, relatively speaking. That's a very nice pen, I really like it. So that that happens, yeah. It doesn't always have to be super expensive. Yeah, Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka. Yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I read about it. The problem is I have years and years ago when they started with the animated Clone Wars series, I did see the animated Clone Wars movie. I did see the old animated Clone Wars series, the actually like the drawn, not the computer animated series. I think I probably watched about the first two seasons of the, the Clone Wars, and I, I couldn't... I, I'm not really one for extended series. I like movies, but I don't like extended series of things, typically. So, in all honesty, I, I have not followed the Clone Wars. I know who Ahsoka is, but I... I the same thing with Rebels. I've never seen an episode of Rebels. I like the movies, but I I, I, I can't be bothered. So I'm sure I, I really like Rosario Dawson as an actress. I think she's a really, really good actress. So I, I look forward to seeing her. I also think she has the right sort of, she exudes this sort of strength in my mind. And I think that's very good for that role and fits that series very well. So I, I really look forward to seeing where they will uh, take that. Do you follow true crime? I don't really. Um, no, I don't really. No. That's all right, Grandma. Ellen, it's fine. You can go to bed, my dear. It's okay. It's be, it'll be recorded, so we'll, you can always watch it later. Uh, what else? How many pens do you typically take to work when you would go into the office prior to the pandemic? Yeah, I was just thinking, sorry, this is just a random thought, but I was just thinking the other day how how weird, I was driving somewhere and I took the route that I used to take to work. And I, I was just, it's so weird. I'm, I'm Obviously I'm not the only one who feels that way. This is not a revolutionary thought, but I just found it so strange to, to think there was a time 
But every morning I'd get up and get ready and I would get in the car and I would, whereas now it's just, I wake up and I make tea and I sit here to work. It's weird. I find it weird. I, I, it's not weird that I'm doing this because I'm accustomed to this now. It's weird that I used to go out every single morning. That's what strikes me as weird. Anyway, it was a really, sorry, strange thought. Um, yeah, how many pens? I would typically take four. I have this. I like this pouch. It fits four pens comfortably, and that's all I need. I know there are people who take 12 pens or whatever, and that's fine. But I, for me, four pens is more than enough. I, I, I really don't need uh, more than that, personally. No, The Mandalorian Season 2 is not yet out, um, but they uh, it is coming. They announced something. They showed some pictures recently. I won't say October, but I don't know if it's coming out in October, if I'm now messing things up. At some point, it'll be out, Season 2. Any thoughts on Jordan Peterson? Yeah, I think he really likes to polarize people with what he says. And I, I, I understand that that is a way to make people think. It's not necessarily the way I would pick to make people think. But, you know, to each his own, if you are very, very opinionated, um, which I, I definitely think he is, then that is one way to, uh, to, to get people to think. But again, it wouldn't be my way to make people think. Um, what? Sorry, let me just see if I missed something. What are your views on double broad bock titanium nibs? I'm just thinking, I don't think I've ever used one. I think the broadest I've used is uh, the broad, just the broad. I happen to have one on this. Did I show you this? So my friend William Shakur is 3D printed. It's basically an Omas 360 because that's what I asked for. But not exactly, but that's what we, what we kind of went for. So pretty sure it's bigger than a Magnum. It's really big. Fatter. <laughs> and I had a lot of fun with this. So it has a section that is triangular, but rounded more rounded than a 360 section. But this has a Bock number eight nib, and this happens to be abroad, and it's very, very comfortable. Very comfortable pen, nice and big, and I really liked it. It's a bit less fragile than the Old Masters too. Any new light in the darkness videos planned? Yeah, I was talking to Anna, and we had some ideas, but we were hiking somewhere um, in the mountains when we were discussing these things. And I think we were both both fairly wiped after that. And then we forgot all the brilliant ideas we had. So there will be a moment when we remember, and when we remember what we wanted to do, then we'll record some more. Because we weren't done. There was more to come. The same thing with Pierre. I also want to do some stuff with Pierre. But things came up last week, and I, 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 didn't, have a, um, I didn't have an opportunity to talk to Pierre. But we will do more of those as well. What's your favorite Twisby? I thought that the, the VAC Mini was very cute. I don't remember if I ever used one. Some, sometimes it's, it blurs together a little bit, um, but um, I like the size that I'm not a huge pocket pen user, but because of that, that vacuum filling system, I thought it was quite cool. I also thought the Eco was actually a very robust pen, which was really quite nice. So I think there are very nice Twisbees. I also found their nibs to be very smooth. Even just the standard, like the, the, the old 540, I had, I had a 540, I think. Not yet, not the 530 anymore, but the 540. And that was very nice. Very smooth steel nib. Really enjoyed. What else? What was the inexpensive pen? That was an Opus 88 Omar. Yeah, so sorry, this ties in. So when is the next Pierre Convo planned? I, I'll see if, if we have time. I don't know if I have time this weekend because uh, with the start of the semester and all that, it's it's been uh, it's been a slice. 
but beyond that, we, we will we will find something at some point because we were definitely not done having conversations. There was a lot more to talk about. So there we go. Favorite actor and actress. That's an interesting question. Um, I think as an actor, I have tremendous respect for Sir Anthony Hopkins, who can just do all kinds of things. And I really like his diction. For some, I really like his diction, the way I just, I, I just love that. I, I love to hear him talk. There is also a thing about the intensity in the way he acts. There is a scene in Hannibal, whether at the opera, and some police officer is hunting him. And Hannibal knows. And he's trying, I think, to intimidate this police officer. And it's a beautiful scene. You can, you can find this on YouTube, the Hannibal and the opera, where the police officer sitting behind him and he just turns around and he just stares at him like that and it's incredibly creepy the way he does it, very physical acting but it's such an intense stare that makes you incredibly uncomfortable I find that really impressive as to actress well I really like Scarlett Johansson but for very very different reasons than I like Anthony Hopkins um, as to yeah, that's very different qualities. Um, I don't know if I like her that much for her acting. Um, yeah, I have to think about that. There's so many fantastic uh, female actresses as well as actors. It's hard to pick one actor, but I have to think about it. I mean, it's easy to say something like Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep for me is the same class as Anthony Hopkins. It's such such a, a wide range of, 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 of skills and abilities, uh, but it's very, very interesting. So I always, yeah, yeah, I, I really enjoy her. Plus all the accents. So people always make fun of all the accents, but you have to admit it is, it is impressive. How has COVID-19 changed your living patterns? Well, it's, it's, it's weird. Um, it's strange. I found that so many of the things you you take for granted or that you come to take for granted, uh, you 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 kind of lose. Like I, this is a very old man thing to say, but I like going to a mall to walk. Bear in mind, winter here is between minus twenty and minus forty, so it's very cold out. And although it's nice to go on a hike in the snow. There are days where it's actually you have to be careful because if it's minus 40 out and you go walking, the, the bad things can happen to you. It's very, very cold. So I like to go to the mall, I like to walk around. Plus, I like that kind of stuff in winter for Christmassy things. I'm a nostalgic sucker and I like I like Christmassy lights and such. Um, but but all of a sudden, I know it's not Christmas now, I know it's not winter now, but all of a sudden you lose that. And I would I would often find myself coming home from work, eating, etc., driving off, say go go to mall, walk around a bit, or or get an ice cream or something like like just a dessert, just do something. And all of a sudden that was just all gone, right? And that is I think it makes you appreciate these things that we have. And that you take for granted, and that sounds like a really cliche thing to thing to say. But I really notice that with uh, I notice the ease with which we think, oh, I'm going to go out for lunch here, I'm going to go have dinner here, I'm going to have you know do this takeout or get this, or and all of a sudden that's gone. And these are absolute luxuries, and that it's very interesting. I find to to become more aware of that. And also kind of decide that you don't really need that. A lot of impulse buying has, has really ceased, for example, because you just don't go out. And when you do go out, I think you appreciate it more too. 
even if it's something like going to the grocery store, initially there was this giant chaos and all the, the canned goods aisles were just empty and, and basically plundered. I mean, not, but you know what I mean? Like they were all, everything was gone. And that's very uncommon in our society. So to be confronted with that, I found it pretty creepy. But again, it also kind of makes you appreciate what you have. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest difference beyond the, 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 the one big thing that I really miss is going into work. I've never been someone who really likes working from home. Some people really love that. I've never liked that uh, just because I find I'm more easily distracted at home. And the other thing is you, you miss the social, social, social interaction with your colleagues. Right, you 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 go. You quickly grab a coffee or do quickly that you know this kind of stuff. At lunch, eat your lunch together. These kinds of things, and that disappears. And uh, and that now, of course, with as everyone with all these digital meetings, it's not the same. And you feel that 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 barrier. It's the same thing with the on with the teaching, of course. When you teach, when you're in front of a classroom, very different from what my teaching is now, which is this. This is my current teaching. I can't see the students. I can just see gray balloons with their names in them. Uh, so it's it's a very depersonalized thing, which which works because it's what we have to do. This is this is the way. So I understand that, but that it is impactful in your life. I think. Yeah, those are some things. Yeah. Anyway, that that I think that kind of covers it. It was a very long answer. Sorry. I think Lamy nibs are terrible. I bought four of them: fine broad, one point one and one point five. All of them were scratchy. I can't understand how people can like Lamy. I don't know. The Lamy nibs I've used have all been. Pretty smooth. Now, the, the 1.1, the 1.5 millimeter nibs, they don't have tipping. So that could be a little bit of a different experience. Especially the Lamy Broad nibs I've used were, were quite steel or gold, but but steel would definitely work, work quite well. I found that quite, quite nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, what else do we have? I've seen your name show up a few times in the like section of the Onion's Instagram page. Do you have a favorite article? Not really, but they always entertain me. I always find it a very nice, entertaining uh, thing to read. I also really appreciate the creativity they put into some of their articles. That that's that that was really nice. I remember, but this is um, years ago there was there was a site like that in the Netherlands too and I, I remember at some point there was a whole thing about precision bombing precision bombing became a became a thing and in newspapers precision bombing then there was the economical recession and then they um, uh, they they made some story up about how the economy had been precision bombed and I just thought it was funny I just enjoy those things uh, what else Favorite pen from Pilot. I'm not a huge Pilot user. There's nothing wrong with the pens. It's just that I'm not a massive fan of their fan of their designs. I have the Namiki Emperor. That's a higher end Pilot slash Namiki pen. Um, but I I don't really have any any Pilots beyond that. What else do we have? Have I seen the world's fastest Indian? I, fastest Indian. I have not seen it, but I shall check it out. I really want... I, I can't speak. Brands you can recommend that have steel nibs that write good out of the box. Yes. Faber-Castell. No doubt about it. I, have, I don't believe I've ever had an issue with a Faber-Castell nib. I have an issue with the light, though. Slava tebe pokazavše mu nam zvijet. Okay. What else? Coca-Cola or Pepsi? For me, Coca-Cola. I have a thing for Coke Zero. I don't really drink any other soda. 
but I do really like my Coke Zero with a bit of lime in it. You inspired me to get a master's degree and become a therapist along with impacting my love for fountain pens. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> that's a really big ding. Big, big ding. I'm, I'm half Dutch today. So I, it's been a long day. So I feel my speech is off. That's really neat. I think therapy is a, an incredibly noble pursuit. So that's awesome and fantastic. And congratulations. Master's degree. Or will you get a master's degree? In any case, either congratulations <laughs> or good luck. It's a fun journey, though. What do you think of Goulet nibs? I think they're good nibs. I, I, I think they're just Yovo nibs, right? So I, I don't know. The, 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 I don't think they really, really stand apart from regular Yovo nibs, um, but... but I think they're good nibs. I've used one, I think something calligraphy-esque, 1.5 or something. And that was very nice. That was a very nice, uh, nice steel nib. Worked very well and uh, yeah, did, did perform everything you should do. What is your favorite noodless ink? I don't use any noodless inks, really. What else? What do you prefer, Yovo or Bok nibs? Um, yeah, I get that question more than once. I, I don't know if I have a clear preference. There are, my, my standard for that has always been Twisby, which initially had Schmidt nibs and then Bok and then Yovo. And I found that every time they improved a bit. Schmidt nibs are probably my least favorite, but I want to say they are made by either Bok or Yovo. I forget. Someone told me that. I didn't know that, but someone told me that. So I like those least. There's nothing wrong with them, but I just like those least. Bok and Yovo, I have found that sometimes Bok can be a little bit on the dry side, and I found Yovo nibs to be a little bit wetter overall. And given that I like a somewhat wetter nib, it was really nice for me when they are a little wetter. In absolute writing experience, does it make a huge difference? I don't think so. Plus, you can change, you know, you can change the, uh, you can make them wetter or whatever, tune them any way you like. But that I would say is about my, my opinion. And then, of course, different differs whether it's steel or gold that matters uh, I've, I've used the uh, Yovo number 8 which I think they discontinued now in gold which I found a very pleasant nib it's a shame they discontinued them but it's still a bit different uh, from the steel nibs it does feel different I feel it was a really weird roundabout answer but so I don't I don't know I don't I also don't think that if you were to blindfold me and say, well, there's a Jovo and there's a Bok nib, tell us which is which, I don't think I'd be able to do so. I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference. I'm from Spain and I'm looking for a pen that costs near 30 euros. What's your recommendation? Well, Lamy Safari is always a safe bet. They're robust pens. I, I, I've never had issues with them. You can also... Uh, sorry. <laughs> As I said, long day. You can also look for something else, like um, uh, the, the some of the relatively more affordable Faber Castells, um, Basic or um, Loom. I don't know if that's exactly in thirty euro range, but but those are very very nice pens too. What else? Is there a brand known for sexy feedback while writing? Well, that depends a little bit how you define sexy feedback. But there are brands that do. For example, Sailor nibs tend to have a bit of feedback, but also the Aurora. Aurora nibs typically have quite a lot of feedback, relatively speaking. So I think that's. Um, I think Aurora is a good. Uh, is always a good good call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Someone else says that too. Yes, I agree. Quilladilic, quilladilic. It's a fun word to say. Sorry. Um, 
Yeah, if it's for school, a future university, then yeah, I would say Lamy uh, Safari or Faber Castell something. Basic, Loom. Um, did they have another one at some point? The Basic, the Loom. Well, anyway, th th those those have very, very good steel nibs, are relatively affordable. What I like about the Loom is that it also has a metal uh, body. So it is, it's really quite a robust pen, which is nice if you drop it or something. Yeah, the Pilot A23, that is a nice one. I, I agree, the Pilot Customer Rushi is very nice, but it's really expensive, and that's what's holding me back, because it's a pen I would like to try out, but I really find it expensive for what it is, uh, which is not to say it's not worth it, but I, but it's just, it's a lot. So, yeah. 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 I never knew Aurora had some feedback, but I do have a Sailor 19 level large. How do they compare to the Sailors? Well, it is a little subjective, of course, but in my mind, Aurora has a bit more feedback than Sailor. And then again, it's a while ago that I used an Aurora, so. You had two Pen World Reader Choice Award winners in your, in your, is that a pen in your podcast videos? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Ryan, I'm, I'm very happy with Ryan because he's such a nice guy. So, yeah, yeah. The, I really, really like him and I really like his work. But it kind of helps when, sorry, I'm just adjusting my leg here. Um, it really helps when someone is very nice too. And Ryan is an incredibly sweet guy. So it's always fun to, to hang out with him and uh, talk to him. What do you think of Goulet nibs? We were just talking about Goulet nibs. I think they're good nibs. Do you like any of the classic vintage pens from Parker, Schaefer, Wall, Eversharp, etc.? Um, I'm not a not really a vintage pen user, and that's entirely me. But I just don't find myself using them or having a use for them. And that's, again, that's just me, but it just doesn't, there's not a great click between vintage and me. Ah, yes. Inktronic says he put a Faber Castell loom nib on a Lingmo Lorelei. Yeah, that would, that would be a pretty good mix, actually, because those loom nibs are, are very, very smooth, very pleasant to use. Yeah, Diplomat's also a good one. They also have very nice, smooth nibs. Yep, yep. Another question, why are more people typing than liking? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Seven likes. You all are here. Hit the like button. No, I don't. I don't. That is one thing that I, I cannot bring myself to do in videos. Says I'm like, if you like the video, then like and subscribe. I don't know why I'm suddenly a bit Bill Cosby-esque, but I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know. I can't do that anymore because he's now a convicted rapist, isn't he? I don't know why. Uh, I just can't. I can't do it like this. Oh, like like the video and subscribe and do the. And I, I don't know. I always struggle with that. If you want to subscribe, then subscribe. And if you don't, then don't. And I still enjoy and like you. I thought the Pilot Customer Rushi was very expensive for what it is until I rode with it and had to have one. If you get it from Japan, you can save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Das muss ich vielleicht versuchen. I'll give it a shot. It's been noted. I filled out a Rodia dot pad in record time with a Faber Castell Ondoro. That's another nice Faber Castell, by the way. The Ondoro. It's a little weird with the with the facets, but but it it's small section, but it, but it, I, I thought it was very comfortable. <coughs> Sorry. And I set it next to Parker Fifty One. Yeah, they're they're good. They're good pens. Yeah. The emotion. Yeah, the Faber Castell emotion. It's always been one of my favorites. Again, an odd pen. Oh, an odd pen because it's kind of top heavy and very short and stocky, but beautiful, beautiful nibs. Yeah, yeah. My first Faber-Castell Emotion, 
I've sold because I ended up not really, at some point I had so many pens, I didn't use them. I didn't use them. So I, I sold off a bunch. First Fabrica still in motion, I, I'll, I'll never forget. I was at the first Tilburg pen show, which was a Saturday, my, my, my first Tilburg pen show. And a friend came there from, he came over from Germany and he brought some pens and I tried his pens. This was very early on, 2011. I just started reviewing really and uh, uh, I tried them out and he had a Faber-Castell Emotion in broad. And the next, I loved it. I love the nib, so smooth. Uh, it really exceptional steel nibs. And the next day I flew out to Mallorca for a conference, really weird four-day conference, and I remember the last night in the hotel, everything was over, and I was bored, and I was on Le Coron du Comte's website, and I bought an Emotion. So my first Faber-Castell Emotion, which is now owned by someone else because I sold it, was bought in Mallorca, but not from Mallorca, it was just ordered while in Mallorca. On Mallorca, I guess. It's an island, isn't it? In an island, on an island. Too long a day. Don't care. You know what I mean? All right. I recently jumped into vintage and really wish I did do sooner. I'm selling off a bunch of my model pens. Yeah, I understand the appeal. It's just not my appeal. I, I don't... I've never gotten into it. Yeah. About the, inexpen about the expensive pens topic, nobody asks why painting, painting is this expensive. It's normal in the art world. And I think there are many brands out there that make pens that are art independently from the used materials. Yeah, I, 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 I get that. We've gone, from, <laughs> we've gone from seven to 27 likes in just like minutes. It's kind of cute. Um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a thing. Pens have become a luxury object and we know they're luxury objects and prices have gone up and up and up and up and up and up. Um, and people keep paying it. So I, I, I thought it was an interesting topic for a video to discuss why we are willing to spend so much on pens. But yeah, it's uh, there are definitely pen makers who hammer out pens that are very, very, very expensive, I would say. What else do I have? Yeah, the person says, that's what I like about you. Don't bug people for the obvious. If you like the content, subscribe, like the video, hit the like button, no need to be obnoxious. Yeah, it is. And I mean, also in the other way, it also works the other way around. If you don't like it, unsubscribe or don't watch the videos. If you like, the fountain pen stuff, but not the stoicism stuff. I don't force you to watch the stoicism stuff. If I do the very rare and occasional anatomy video because I get bored and I think I want to do some anatomy, you don't have to watch the anatomy video, but I think people don't always understand that. Yeah. What are my top five pens currently? I don't know. It changes a lot. I have to start thinking about it because slowly but steadily, I can't believe it, but 2020 is coming to an end. And not soon enough it was. But in any case, that means there's going to have to be another greatest of all time video in it. So I, I have to think about it. I um, didn't get a whole lot of new pens this year. But uh, there, there are some that I would like to change. So, yeah, I have to think about it. I bought vintage earlier. Now I have a bunch of them that I never use. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. That, that's why I'm incredibly... Now I, I am incredibly selective in what I do get. And if I, if I buy that pen, then it's something that I really want and that I really use. But, but I think in all of 2020, two pens that I bought, one, 
less than three, and I'm very happy because what I have makes me happy and I actually use. Ah, this is Niederland order. Yeah, yes, I am Dutch. This is true. Been following you since two thousand. Sorry, since two thousand twelve. Also bought a few pens from you. Thanks to the bottom of my heart for keeping me entertained and educated through the years. I aim to please. Yes, I remember you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No one, thank you for your support. It's it's always it's 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 wonderful. Um, when I think about this this whole journey, because it's been. Very, very fascinating. I mean, I started January 2011 with the pen stuff on YouTube. And it's been a long time. And it's going to be 10 years come January 2021. And that's a very long time. <laughs> Given that I'm 35 years old, that's a long time. And many good things have come from this. But... It's very interesting when you talk to people, and there are some of those who, who say, well, I've, I've been there from the beginning. I've, I've been there since 2012 or since 2011. And a lot of things have changed, and a lot of things, I think, in many ways, I, I in just making the videos, I'm not talking about personality, although that, that too, but I've grown. I mean, I watch the oldest videos with much despair and think, I don't, God, come, come to the point because I talked a lot and they, the video quality is terrible because I used a built-in webcam. And these days, built-in webcams are really good, but back in the day, they were not. So it's very interesting to see that whole process. And I think I should probably do a sappy reflecting on 10 years of reviewing video at some point um, because it's, you know, it's, it's um, so many things, so many things that, that have happened through this because of this. And that's, uh, yeah, that's very, very interesting. To me, have you refused to lend your pen at work to someone else? Oh, sorry, or somewhere somewhere else? Uh, I, I sometimes have, yeah, but I typically have a ballpoint with me as well. Oh, that startled me. The wind is picking up. It was a bit peculiar out earlier. Um, yeah, it happens, and I typically have a ballpoint with me for these kinds of purposes, and it depends a bit. There are people I have converted at least one colleague here into to fountain pens and in the Netherlands I've, I've 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 tried and sometimes it's worked too you know fairly quickly whether someone is at least has used a fountain pen before if they have not <clears throat> then I'm very hesitant and um, at some point in the Calgary pen club which is the local pen club I, the uh, gentleman found out that two of his Omar's nibs had been sprung by people, maybe new club members who were not yet very accustomed to fountain pens. And that is, uh, that is a serious issue because those are expensive nibs and pretty much irreplaceable at some point. So that, that, yeah, yeah, that is, uh, that is an issue. And, and I, I'm, I'm always a bit, um, wary of that. Yeah. 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 Quilladilic says he loves the stoicism stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I find it interesting. I find it helpful. And I have the feeling those videos get a much smaller audience than the pen stuff, which makes sense. It's a pen channel. But I do have the feeling that the people who, who do watch them do like them and do come back for more. So that's always interesting. And that's fine. I mean, I, I'm fine with having a smaller audience, but uh, um, people that are very interested. I've seen a connection between pens and pocket knives, at least here in Texas. Do you care about knives at all? We are still friends either way. Yeah, I, I do like a good pocket knife. I don't have a massive collection. I have a few. I don't really like very tactical pen, uh, sorry, tactical uh, pocket knives. I, I like more classic looking stuff simply because I just like the look of that more. Uh, but I, I, I do like it. It's not for me a, a hobby as extensive as, as pens are, but I have reviewed a few knives even on, on YouTube. So I, I find that I find it interesting and it is it is a commonality. I think I think definitely in the US, maybe North America and Canada too. In Europe I found it a little less strong, but I definitely know some pen people who are who are knife people too. Yeah. I'm teaching a class introducing people to fountain pens. What is the most important info you would give them? 
learn to use them and clean them. I think these are very important things. It's not like a ballpoint. You cannot treat a fountain pen the same way you would treat a ballpoint. And understand that there is some maintenance involved. Because otherwise you may run into trouble later. Beyond that, I think it's just a matter of having fun. And, and spend some time on figuring out what the right nib for you is. A lot of people start out with medium, which is fine. Uh, but <laughs> a lot of people start out with medium, which is okay. But maybe a fine nib is better for you or a broad nib is better for you, right? So if, if possible, think a little bit about what type of nib suits you. Maybe try out some other people's pens if you can or go to a shop and try out some nibs, but, but learn these kinds of things because it will, it will improve your enjoyment of the pens. Yeah, someone else says, the first fountain pen YouTuber I watched. Yeah, yeah, and the diverse topics. Yeah, I find the diverse topics interesting as well. I mean, I, again, if you if I upload something that you don't like, then of course you are free not to watch it. But some people get incredibly upset because I think they f they feel that, that whatever I, I upload, they should watch, and then they are annoyed that they have watched something and didn't find interesting. But that, that, that really seems to be the logic, but I, I maybe maybe that logic requires a bit of testing, you know? Just saying. My grandfather used to say, never lend your wife and never lend your fountain pen. Yeah, that would be, <laughs> be a good way to do it. Uh, watched you with the lobster in 2011. Oh, yeah, Lord Windermere is still very much alive. He does show up a bit more on Instagram now these days, but uh, not that often, but, but a bit more. Yeah. Try the Mont Blanc Masters from Meisterstück. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I have, I think, reviewed one or two. Very interesting pens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Someone else says, I've been watching since the beginning. Enjoyed it very much. Thanks for contributing so much to the community as I try. Yeah. Yeah, the parody lobster videos back in the day were hilarious. Oh, yes, and there is there is more to come. I think Lord Windermere and the professor should be coming out of retirement a bit and maybe make some more appearances. You know. Has your wife ever denied you the use of a pen? No, I don't think so. But there have definitely been pens that have disappeared. Put it that way. What's your new addition to the kitchen knife collection? You know, I haven't bought a knife in a long time. I went a little overboard with kitchen knives at some point, but then at some point you realize that you, <laughs> it's like with pens, you have what you need. You don't need 15 of each. I didn't have that many, but, you know, just saying. So for me, that that's, um, th th yeah, th that's... Again, the same thing, I approach pens, I try to approach pens, I always think of Miyamoto Musashi and do not seek either to practice or to possess arms beyond what is useful. And that applies for me to pens, it applies for me to, to, to knives, kitchen knives as well, anything really. I already sometimes feel that I still have too, too many pens now, but I have way less than what I ever had, so yeah, progress has been made. You're too hard in your old videos, says Carol. I've watched them recently and they're good. Not as good as today, of course. You're much more comfortable now and sometimes silly. Yeah, that's the thing. I think I was very serious. Hello, my name is Stephen Brown. And today I'm going to be talking about this pen. It is a Faber Castell Emotion. And I got it the other day or something. I think I've relaxed a bit more. And that I think is the most important thing. A lot of people ask me, I mean, when I say a lot of people, I mean, not 10 people a day, but I mean, you'll understand, I get this question fairly regularly. People say, I want to get into fountain pen reviewing. What tips do you have? And for me, the most important tip is develop your own style and your own voice. The rest will come. The, the, the equipment will come. I don't use super fancy equipment because I refuse. Could I improve the video quality? Probably. Could I improve the audio quality? Almost certainly. 
I'm still I, I should get a mic for the camera at some point. I have I have like for these videos I have I have a separate microphone now which has improved the audio I think but it doesn't work on the camera. That will come. That will come. You can invest in that if it turns out you really like this stuff. But you have to find a way to do videos that is your way. That is not the way I do it, or Brian Goulet does it, or Penboy Roy does it. I don't think anyone can do what Penboy Roy does because that that is a truly unique style, which I think is fantastic. I don't mean that in a negative way; I mean in a very positive way. But I mean a lot of like it, it's not like you 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 can't like I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. That's my thing, and it's fine if you want to use that because I clearly haven't trademarked that thing. But that's my thing. So find find your own way to do it. I think that's that's very important that you have that 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 voice. And and for me, I like to keep it short. I don't like to do a review that's half an hour long because I will bore people to death. I can see the stats. Fifteen minute video. I can be happy if people watch five minutes. So you have to be to the point, and you have to do it in a way that's attractive and for me that is because that's what i like it's strange things and it is quirky jokes and it is that kind of stuff and maybe there's some singing here and there bad singing or there is there is something like the professor or whatever but it matters that you you also provide a bit of entertainment and to be honest my review style is very much my teaching style as well because there too if you are just droning on and on, today we're going to be talking about the brain. Let me show you a brain. This is a brain that has a frontal lobe and a parietal lobe and this is an occipital lobe. You're already zoned out. You're already zoned out, right? So you want you want to do it in such a way that people find it interesting what you're saying. And then you will attract and bind an audience. I've started to ramble, so I'll shut up now. But in any case... That really matters to me, that you have that style, you have your voice, you have you, you, you do it the way you want to do it. And people enjoy that because it's not more of the same, right? What is it about fountain pens that draws you to them? For me, it's a couple things. For sure, the writing experience. It, it really is, like I, I like many of us, I've used the cheap ballpoints. Um, I've used them, you know, the, the ones you get at a hotel. And, um, you know, the answer is no. Like at some point you use a fountain pen, you think this is amazing. I don't have to push on it. I don't have to do all these things. Just So that that is a really nice, comfortable feeling to me. For me, there's also the joy of using inks. I don't have many inks. I don't, I don't own many inks. I don't. I don't care for for all kinds of fancy inks. I just have a few that I really like. And here's something that I've enjoyed from primary school because in primary school in the Netherlands we start we learned to write with a pencil. And then the next year you move on to a fountain pen, school supplied fountain pen. And to me, what I was fascinated by as a kid was you write because I mean you're talking like like a seven eight year old right. You write and you have this liquid ink on the page and then you watch it dry. That sounds really dull and boring, but I found that fascinating. You have this liquid coming out of a pen as opposed to the smelly, oily substance coming from a ballpoint, especially a cheap ballpoint. That difference was was huge. And and that's that's attracted me to them. And it's been on and off a bit. I used them in high school too, and then I moved back to ballpoints and I, I started to use fountain pens again. University, I did use... I've used ballpoints and I, I switched to, to fountain pens again. And now I really use fountain pens almost exclusively. I hardly ever use a ballpoint, sometimes use a roller ball, but I, I'm fountain pens are my thing. So that's it. The, the 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 feeling and also the whole meditative process of inking up the pen and then using it and then cleaning it. And you know, that that to me is it's very nice. It's a relaxing thing, it's a fun thing. I really enjoy that aspect of it. More so than the collecting. I don't really collect. I don't buy every new pen coming out. I don't have a real focus in, in what I own. But what I do have, I really like. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm all for the like button for videos, but I can't understand the value of the down thumb button. Yeah, it's interesting that that you see that, in, for example, in in, um, in in Instagram, right? That they've, they deliberately made the choice of there's just the like and there's no dislike. What is the point? What is the point in disliking a video? You, I mean, again, you 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 could not watch it if you don't like it. But to let someone know you dislike it, yeah, I don't know. Every video I do will get a couple of dislikes. It's always it's always the case. It's always the case, and uh, it doesn't matter whether it's something like with Pierre with an opinion, with two opinionated people. Like we're, we're talking about opinions, and that's the, to me the enjoyment of that video because you can be opinionated and you can still be polite, respectful, and, and uh, intelligent about it. In my mind, although these days I don't know how common that is, but in any case, that, that to me is interesting. They get dislikes, but I mean, the, you, even like a pen review, and I'm like, okay, I am. I am reviewing a fountain pen. Was this so life-changing to you that you thought, that asshole, I'm going to dislike this? You know, I, 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 I just don't, I don't really understand how that works. But, but, but yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. Are you familiar with David Mitchell's three-point pen policy? No. I have to look it up. That sounds fascinating. I almost expected Lord Windy to appear in the Staz video you posted the other day. Yeah, I, um, yeah, yeah, I was tempted, but that was actually for a class. So I thought I probably should keep it a little uh, toned down. But the interesting thing is, I do the, I record the, well, no, don't, I record the classes, but it is streaming. So it is, it is what we call synchronous, so live. And there were students who asked, what's the name of the skeleton? And what I find fascinating is that I wonder if people would also ask if he had a name, if he wasn't wearing a hat. Also, do you realize how creepy Roger looks without a hat? Because you've now become used to Roger with a hat. I, I'm serious. I did it the other day, and he looks weird and naked. I'll show you. Pay attention. I'm wearing pants, so it's okay. You see it? It's weird. He looks incredibly perverted, especially with the monocle, but like, it's weird. It's weird. So the hat, it does something. It's messed up. Anyway. Sorry about that. That was a strange thing, but yeah. What do you do when you encounter bad paper? Throw it out. You can use it with a ballpoint. I mean, you don't throw out your paper, but I mean, like you, you can use it with a ballpoint. I, I tend to use paper that I that I like. And the strange thing is, I had this thing. I don't know what it is. Like I had a, I had a notepad uh, from Nelson, which is a, a textbook publisher, and it turns out to be super fountain pen friendly. Gonna have to have a word with the rep, uh, but yeah, no, that, that's interesting. Sometimes you you find something that's surprisingly good with bad paper. Yeah, sometimes it's just not fountain pen friendly, and that's a shame. But stick to some of the the well known brands, Clairefontaine, Rhodia, uh, and again, as I said, sometimes this stuff. Oxford is is very inexpensive and it's very good paper. There are options. What else do we have? Try not to over scroll, so that's why I'm so careful here. Do you like watches? I'm not a huge watch person. I have one watch. I thought, oh, yeah. This is my trusty watch. Actually, I have two watches. This is a Seiko Sportura. This is all I need. I don't need anything fancy. I also have a Movado, which is a little, it's very nice and black and very dressy. So if I have to wear something fancy just for work, you have to dress up, you have these things. And then it's kind of nice. But beyond that, I don't have anything. I don't need anything. I don't want to get into the rabbit hole of watches. I already have pens. That's good enough, even though I don't buy that much anymore. But like, I, I don't 
wanted to become a watch person. There's nothing wrong with watches, there's nothing wrong with watch people, but I don't want to be one of them. Um, what else do we have? Completely enjoy all your videos. Please remember to care for yourself. I try. Your ink is one of my favorite, best behaving I've found. Yeah, it's uh, one of my favorites too. <laughs> But that's because I'm slightly biased. But I do like I, I do like I'm, I'm honest. I like SBRE Brown. It turned out exactly the way I wanted it to turn out. Um, so yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's 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 very very nice, and um, yeah, no, I, I I've been very happy with it. It just came out nicely with the shading and the, the way it behaves. It can have a little bit of nib creep sometimes. There is an orange uh, dye in it. But I haven't found it to be terrible, so I'm happy with that. If you had to transform yourself into a fountain pen, which would you be? I think only an emperor would be appropriate at this point. Think about it. Have you tried Kokuyo paper? No, I have not. Um, I have not, no. Kokuyo, no, I don't think so. I did just get in this. I just had this out to show you. Uh, this is Archie's calligraphy from Poland. Uh, he sent me some stuff, so I will review this. Uh, but I haven't even opened it yet. So, should I open it now? Should I open one now? Do like knives, you can open with one hand. But, I think I own two. So, for something I like, it's not a whole lot. Sorry for the noise. ASMR with SBB Brown. Okay, what do we got? Archie's dotted notebook with a little elastic band, and then we have the little blotting sheet. You see the dots? It'll be closer, don't I? Yeah, there is dots. And what else? Because this sounded fascinating. Archie's calligraphy. What what is in here? More ASMR. There's a lever in it. Can't get it out. Well, look how fancily this is done. I'm so fancy. I know what's in here, so I mean, I have to unwrap this. You, you, you're seeing it here first. Like people sent me things for which I'm most grateful. I don't know what it is. Is this boring or is this okay? No, of course it's not boring. You are quivering with anticipation like a meerkat. I understand. Let me see if I can do this without cutting myself, trying to hurry up. More ASMR. Okay. I'm sorry. It's been a long day, told you. By God, it's leather. You know that leather smell? This has it. Ooh. Well, that is actually very beautiful. Thank you, Archie. A leather cover. Does it fit? Yeah, it looks like it would fit. I mean, it looks a bit... You could put something a little bigger in, but the idea is there. Ah, so I haven't milk cut field in a while. So weird. Anyway, so there is that. I got stuff. What else? I've done a number of videos. I wonder if it's rude to ask for some feedback. No, it's not rude. But you'll have to send me an email because I forget. It's as I forget. Sorry. I, I can handle it. I mean, if. 
if my if my opinion is useful i, I never know that like i'm th 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 this is not false modesty but i always people ask me for feedback i'm like yeah, i'm just a guy like i mean I, I know that i have a lot of subscribers but that's just a matter of time i was there at the right time so that was you know that's built up over what like almost 10 years so but, but i look it's fine doc brown i have a man crush on you well i understand i'm very sexy but having said that, <laughs> do you tend to use different paper or stick to the same paper for personal use? Notebook or sheets? Depends. Notebook sometimes, but sheets for other things. For for work, I, I've just been using, I've shown this a couple of times, but I'll show you again. I've been using the Lockbee, which I really like, which has little notebooks in them, right? So you got these these notebooks in them, which, which you know, you've got one of those little elastic bands and that works really well. Um, I like these a lot. Sometimes I like to use loose leaf, for example, if I take notes for classes, and I like to have loose leaf because I have the PowerPoints printed, and I can put that along with the PowerPoints, so then I use loose leaf. I have certain papers that I really like. Rhodia is always a good bet. Never had bad, bad experiences with Rhodia. Um, Ah, still has that smell. Um, so Rodia is not, not bad. Clairefontaine, like like I said before, like these kinds of things. Tomoe River, some people love Tomoe River. It's in the um, Log B things, actually. I do like that. So I'm sorry, it's really like, I, I'm not trying to avoid, but, but the thing is, it really, for me, it really depends on the, on the, uh, the goal, just like, like uh, with pens. It depends on the specific purpose. Sometimes I love loose leaf. Sometimes I really love a notebook to keep things together. Together. Or oh, New Zealand now. That's weird. Snap out of it, Brad. Okay. Um, try Mont Blanc Meisterstück one leather pen pouch. I haven't tried them, but they are undoubtedly nice. What's your everyday notebook for journaling? Right now, I use a moleskin. It's that simple. That size with the hardback. There's nothing fancy. Those used to be really bad for fountain pens. I had a lot of bleeding with them in the past, but this one seems fine. I have no. I, did they change their paper? Well, what? Like, yeah, it's weird. But I, I, um, there was an issue. I, I'm sure because back back in the day, I really didn't like them for the fountain pen friendliness. But now this one was really good. So weird. What's your thoughts on ABA? What do you mean by ABA? I'm thinking of some sort of applied behavioral stuff, but I just want to make sure that's what you're talking about. Pierre Miller says, how are you today, Stephen? Pierre, in all honesty, I'm not bad. We should do something again. I don't know if I can make it this weekend, but we ain't off the hook, my man. So stuff is coming. I'm taking a class from Janice Fort, and it's about fountain pens. She told me you were live, so I thought I'd pop on. I've watched every videos and find it fun. Thanks. Good. Thank you. I appreciate that. More to come. Uh, what else? Roger looks bold without the hat. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Again, he looks perverted without the hat. It's weird. It's It's, you know... Now, at some point, I'm going to look like Roger because you see my good side, but this side is not so good. I'm preparing myself. I'm preparing myself that this is my future. This is it. Will you still love me? I think I may look distinguished, like a stern professor or something. Anyway, sorry about that. Just something that's on my mind. What else? Ew. I overscrolled. The hat gives Roger personality. My boyfriend would love Roger. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. No, it is personality. It's also, it's that in the monocle. There is a certain je ne sais quoi about Roger. <laughs> I 
There's a practical reason to thumbs down a video because you can see your thumb down later if you forget that it's bad and clicking it again. Example, long, boring video reviewing your favorite pen. Yes. I suppose, yes. I have a question as to a statement by Ankara about the Omas brand in so kind of re-emergence in the market. I think Ankara purchased Omas. Yes. I don't know what their plans are with, with Omas, but I, 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 I do believe they purchased the name. Yes. But I mean, this is becoming convoluted, right? Because now you have Armando Simoni Club, which is no longer called Armando Simoni Club but the pen family and the pen family has the Arco materials and the Omas celluloids. Then there is Scribo and Scribo was ex Omas employees who have, I think the nib making machine and the feed making machine in case, like, well, I don't know if those are actual things, but I, I, I want to say they have those, they have that equipment. And then you have Ankara, which has the name. So I don't know, man. Like I don't. I, at this point, I don't know who, like who, like who, who is doing what and and with what and with whom, and why. Anyway, just oh, well. Anyway, just saying. Smithson with a Y. That could be Smithson. Then I don't know. Makes good paper. Well, Smithson of Bond Street. I've heard good things about Smithson of Bond Street, but I don't. Is it Smithson and Bond Street? I want to say it's Smithson and Bond Street. Anyway, I have to try all that stuff. The Toll brand from Office Depot works well with fountain pens. I have to try it out. Yep. Yep. I shall check it. I have had... Um, there was a brand at work in Leiden where I worked. Which just must have been like, like a Dutch Office Depot type type um wholesaler the, the you know supply to to uh, the university called lyrico l y r e c o and that paper was very thin but it was fantastic it was super fountain pen friendly didn't bleed and it was superb and it was only something like 60 grams per square meter i couldn't believe it but it was amazing but i haven't used that in a while <laughs> but it was nice while it lasted well it's what time is it? It's 8.05 p.m. here. But it's always fountain pen time. No? Okay. Pocket watches are different from wristwatches from a collector viewpoint. Yeah, I do have a pocket watch somewhere. It belonged to my great-grandfather, but I have to figure out where it is. I'm painting with my fountain pens, and I'd like to put a permanent ink in it. De Atomente's archival. I'm worried it would... Ruin the pen, I will never be able to get it out. Is this a concern? Potentially. I would say if you stick to a fountain pen ink by a fountain pen brand, such as De Atramentis, it's probably fine. But do clean your pen properly. I would not put India ink in my pen because that will clog it within minutes. So that's not meant for a fountain pen, even though it is a liquid ink. If you stick, again, Mont Blanc has permanent inks, De Atramentis has the, the document inks, it's probably fine. But again, do clean your pen. I think you should be okay. I don't know if you already answered this, but would you consider doing a complete collection video on pens and inks? Probably not. And the reason for it is quite simple. When I do just 10 pens for a Graves of All Time video at the end of the year, those have been known to be 30 minutes or more. If I have to go over every pen I own, it will take too long. And the problem is people don't watch that. So it's not that I own hundreds of pens. I have about, I don't know, 30, 35 or something. But it's just too long. It's too long. And like, think about it. If I have 35 pens and I spend just two minutes, two minutes is nothing, right? It's 120 seconds. There's nothing to talk about why you have a pen, why you like it. For 35 pens, it's a 70-minute video. And I know there are people who would watch it, but it gets very long. Um, but I have all the personal pens. Like, I have all the personal pens videos where I go over all the personal pens. I, I don't, I, I will not do a full collection video. 
people have asked for that, but I, I, I simply don't don't see that ending well in in how long it would be. And if you have to cut into multiple sections, then then what's the point? You know, I don't want to sound super super negative about it, but it's just it, it it's too much. I also talk easily, so I can easily talk for five minutes about a pen. Well, then you get thirty five pens times five minutes each. That's it's 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 too long. If you get two options, one, expensive pen, two, 10 inexpensive pen, which option would you prefer? It would really depend on the pens because I have seen expensive pens that I would not really want to use. I've also seen inexpensive pens that I would really not want to use. And then I've seen expensive pens that I would love to use and inexpensive pens I would love to use. So it would really depend on what they are. Really depend on what they are. Yeah, if there's 10 of the same, then I would probably just pick the one expensive pen because I'm not someone who wants to have multiples or something. And it doesn't really work for me. That's just me, but it just doesn't really work for me. I ordered a few pens from MP Candon of Ranga Pens. I did pronounce that right, I'm sure. Uh, a few days ago, and their customer service was amazing, and I'm currently waiting for my pens to arrive. Any thoughts on Ranga pens? Yeah, I've, I have the one. Uh, this is a Ranga model with Rushi on it from Tamanuri Studio. It's a very nice pen. It's a very large pen. But it's very, very comfortable. And I really like uh, like its its feeling. So the, the Rushi is nice. But I mean, just talking about Ranga, right? Bok nib, Ranga pen, very comfortable. Very nice, nice pen. I really like it. Any love for finer nibs recently? I know you used to prefer broad and wet. Well, I still love broad and wet, but I also like finer nibs. And I think a good fine nib right now, for example, I have this inked. The Conan King Size has a fine nib. The Omas Paragon has a fine nib. The LB6 has a medium nib that honestly writes like a fine. And this is a stub, Furore Leonardo. So I don't mind a fine nib. I used to be a bit biased against them, but I found how revolutionary that if it's a good fine nib, then it's really not bad. And that Omas Paragon has a stellar fine nib. It's insane how smooth that is. And it's, it is actually a fine. It's not a medium. It's, it's, it writes like a fine, which in Italian pens is always, you never know, right? You could have a fine that writes like a double broad. You don't know. Like nah, nah, today we felt like this. So you know, as a fine nib, it's 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 a good fine, and I, I love using it. Same thing with the Conan, by the way. It's a beautiful nib. Uh, do your students know about your channel? Yeah, they do, and it's not a secret. I don't keep it a secret. I don't advertise it because that to me that just feels weird. Um, but they do know about it. Just uh, I think it was Tuesday. We're doing these online classes, and I was hanging around a bit near the end to see if there were any questions. And one said, what pen are you using today? So clearly, <laughs> clearly it's known. I've had I've had students come up to me about it. I have converted some students who later told me, yeah, you, you watched the, you know, those videos and I got a, a pen and it turns out I really like it. So it is kind of neat that that, yeah, that, that works. I have some colleagues who comment on it once in a while who find out about it. Again, it's not a secret. It means a public channel. So I mean, it's not, it's not a secret. I, I, don't, I, I don't try to keep it a secret from students either. But again, that's not the same as, as, as broadly advertising it. When they find out, they find out. And sometimes it leads to very interesting uh, conversations, which is, uh, which is actually kind of nice. It's often it's quite interesting. Yeah. What else? No. Uh, it's hit or miss with mole skin. I know it's mole skin, but mole skin just sounds funnier to me. Different papers, different manufacturers. Yeah, that would, that would make sense. That would make sense. Yeah, no, 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 don't worry about it, Emmanuel. That's what I thought you were talking about. Um, sorry, I overscrolled. Applied behavioral analysis. You know, the thing is, I've never actually studied it. So I'm sure it's useful, and I, I, I think it's a very valuable thing. But it's not something that's ever featured in my work or something that I've made a study of. So I, I, I can't really in good faith comment on it because I'm, I'm, I don't have a great understanding of what it is. Sorry. Also, sorry to make you explain that and then say, yeah, that's what I thought it was. And I still don't know. I guess I could have said that <laughs> straight away. I'm sorry. Leuchtturm 1917 over moleskin. Yeah, for me too. Yeah. I should try a barren fig, huh? I'll try a barren fig.
can I review M1000 once more so that we can know the nib quality of Pelican in 2020? Well, I happen to have here a Pelican M1000 that was lent to me, but the nib is uh, rather special. There is this ultra wide nib that came with it. These are modified by people, not me. And then there is a King Eagle, three nibs stacked on top of each other. One looks forward to trying these, but it wouldn't be a standard Pelican nib performance. I'll see what I can do though, I'll see what I can do. Uh, bold work for Matt Armstrong. Yeah, we also got comments on it though. But, you know. What else? Greetings from New Zealand. Greetings back. Do I have any experience with Phil Cow pens? I'll be honest, I have never even heard of Phil Cow pens, so no, I, I have not used them and I don't have thoughts about them. Sorry. Just got my Renga Model 8. Love it. Yeah, I love it too. I love I, I, it. It's very good work. Do very good work. Hi, who is better? Visconti Medici Blue Gold or Visconti Medici Brown Rose Gold? I don't know. I think that's that's a matter of preference. Depends on what you like. With rose gold, a brown would look nice. But to be honest, the blue with rose gold would look good too. So that's, uh, I don't think one's better than the other. That's a, um, a matter of what you, what you prefer, personal preference. I've got a few steel nibs and gold nibs, and I'm looking to buy a nice colorful pen for work. Is there something wrong with me? not justifying paying 230 to 300 Australian dollars for a non-gold nib. No, I wouldn't say so. I know people who refuse to use steel nibs. I know people who refuse to use gold nibs. Look, it's a fountain pen. I think you should do whatever makes you happy. And it's really that simple. If it's a $3,500 pen that makes you happy, buy it. If it's a $50 pen that makes you happy, buy it. If it's a $5 pen that makes you happy, buy it. But, but enjoy what you have. I think sometimes people forget that. They just think they have to buy another pen. And, oh, this comes out. Oh, oh got to have... Not really. Buy what you really like, what really sets something apart for you, something that really makes you enjoy what you have. And you'll be fine. And it'll be fun. And you... You can have great fun with owning one pen, so to speak. Well, I got out of hand quickly, but anyway, that's, that's how I feel about these things. Well, does stoicism teach you about making decisions? Sometimes, because for a stoic, the only decision would be the virtuous decision. So if you have the choice between something that's good and something is bad, you should always pick what's good. Beyond that, it's not really, I don't see a whole lot of this or that is what you should do to make good decisions. I was just thinking about it. I don't really see that in the, in the Stoics. Like, like this is how you make a proper decision or something. Except again, that you should be theoretically as a Stoic be guided by virtue and by doing the right thing. What else? Scrolling. Isn't that a song? Scrolling, scrolling, scroll. I don't think so. Um, some nibs are so broad they write like highlighters. That is correct. Have you ever designed any pen? No. I have not designed anything. Well, period, really. <laughs> I have not designed anything. That includes pens. Yeah. No. No, just the ink, my ink. Any suggestions about ink bottles that are empty? Sometimes I, I save an ink bottle and I put in another ink because that ink may be in a dreadful bottle. It happens that you have bottles that are just unusable. And in such a case, 
I like to use empty. For example, Waterman. I do use up Waterman Blue, just a regular blue, because I use it for a lot of reviews. You see, when someone lends me a pen, I don't want to put in anything that's, you know, noodles based day blue. I'm like, I mean, I, I want to make sure something that actually comes out. Um, and the Waterman bottles, I think, are fantastic because they're so practical and pragmatic and you can really use them. So for me, that, that's a great bottle. And I just put in another ink. Do you think penmanship should be taught again in school with fountain pens? I would like to see it. I would find it a shame if that would disappear. And in many places, it is disappearing. The shame about it is there have been benefits to handwriting shown in, in research literature. And I think I realize that we have to teach children how to type. It's become easier. When I was in school, typing was not a thing. People didn't, oh, you didn't own a computer. It's insane to think about it now, but, but most households didn't have their own computer. Like there was no computer in every household. It was a rare thing. But now, of course, you have to teach children how to type and, and learning how to code, sorry, teaching them how to code is a good thing. But I think we should not lose touch with handwriting. I think it will, it will serve a function, it will serve a purpose. And maybe, maybe there will be a generation that just, doesn't handwrite. And maybe we have to accept that that's okay. More pens for us. But <laughs> there are implications, right? Implications of, of that for the fountain pen world, fountain pen community. But beyond nostalgia, again, I think that the developmental benefits of handwriting shouldn't be overlooked. It's good for your fine motor skills. It's good for the development of your brain. And... Um, I would hate to see it go, yeah. I remember learning to read and write. It's one of the most amazing things that ever happened to me. I remember reading my first books. I was, I was, I was a good reader. I was a precocious reader uh, in, in school, and, I, and I, I always loved it. So for me, that ability to learn to read and write, that was a life-changing experience when I, when I could write things getting very personal, but I mean like that, that to me was, was really an important thing. So yeah, yeah, not to be overlooked. Assuming it flows well, saturated or lubricated ink, which do you go from why broadly speaking? I like saturated inks, Mont Blanc, Corn Poppy Red, Beautiful Red, uh, Irish Green, and I, I like saturated inks. I don't use that many lubricated inks. I do have Konpeki, which I really like. I have it in one pen right now. I think it's a beautiful color. It is very smooth because of the lubricate. It is very nice. But I don't need lubricated ink, really. I, I don't. Yeah. No. Anything you really like about living in Canada? Well, I will say where I live now, I do love the landscape. The province of Alberta is... Well, there's Rocky Mountain. So if I drive south in about 45 minutes, an hour, then driving south on my right hand, I can see the Rocky Mountains. And that's amazing. And I love, I love not just the mountains, but I love the landscape. I love, I love mountains. I, I love the, um, the hills here that you have here. I love the amount of nature. Uh, and I, I'll be honest, I love winter. I've always been someone who doesn't handle heat very well. I don't, I don't mind cold. Even when it's like last winter, we had a, it was funny. We had a, a week of Arctic cold. So it was, it was minus 40 Celsius or Fahrenheit in that case, doesn't matter. And that's incredibly cold. That is very, very cold. But I love that. I love that. I tolerate that much better than heat. And it's pretty hot. It can get pretty hot here in summer. We've had some hot days. We also had a lot of rain. But we've already had wet snow. I was just a couple of days ago. It was zero degrees and, and wet snow. Like literally a few days ago, about a week ago or something. So I like that. I like the snow. I like that in September you can have snow. When I got here 2013, uh, I think... Uh, 
sorry, sorry, 2018, I think September 13th, it started to snow. That was a, a long, very long winter. But basically from September till the end of April, there was snow. And especially early on, it was intermittent and it didn't necessarily stick on the streets. But from about the end of October onwards, there was snow on the ground and it stayed until the end of April. Yeah, I love that. I just love, I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. I love the way it sounds. All the sounds kind of muted. I just like that. I, I'm probably weird that way, but I, I like it. It's like, it's basically like it's multiple months of Christmas. I just enjoy it. Uh, I'm trying to decide between a Sailor 1911 Large, a Pilot A23 and a Platinum A3776. Which do you consider to be a better writer? None. I think all of those are great writers. So I really don't don't think that one will stand out above, head and shoulders above what the others. Nice to meet you from Japan. I especially like pens by Visconti and Pelican. They are nice. One is creative, one is classic. I like him. I have a cousin in higher education that requires all work that is turned in done by hand. That's very interesting. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able to get away with it because we have to use fraud check uh, machines, which require digital uh, copies of everything. But that it is interesting. I guess if it's handwritten, fraud might be a little tougher. But detecting, you know, copied sources would be harder. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think it would be great. I think it would be great. Handwriting. As an IT teacher, my students are surprised when I use my fountain pens. They assume I only use a computer. Yeah, I know. It's, it's weird. And I mean, I've, I've had so many discussions. If you use fountain pens, you know this because you've experienced this. But they can be conversation pieces. And the number of times I've had people start out with something like, wow, I haven't seen a fountain pen in years, sometimes since primary school or something like that. I've also had people say, what kind of pen is that? Younger people who've never seen a fountain pen. I'm not talking about five-year-olds. I'm talking about 19, 20-year-olds who've never seen a fountain pen in their lives. I'm not judging. I'm just saying it's this is becoming a thing. We're the old ones. A different generation. What else? You can only use fountain pens from one country for the rest of your life. Which country would you plumb for and what brands swing it for you? I do. I do like the Italian pens for the looks. But for writing, I would choose Japan. And then I don't really care Sailor or Platinum or three, uh, what is it? Um, Sailor Pilot. I do actually care. I do like Namiki and I do really like Sailor. I don't have many Sailors, but every Sailor I've ever used has been a great pen. And that's pretty impressive. I honestly cannot say every Italian pen I've ever used has been a great pen. So for writing, sorry. <coughs> For me, for the writing, it would really be Japanese pens. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have? Greetings from Rotterdam. It's 425. You are dedicated to be here. Loving your channel. Ik ben Chinese Surinaams Nederlands. Nice. What's my favorite meal? Well, given that you're at least somewhat Suriname, I'll tell you this, curry chicken and roti. I have to say it that way for the Suriname, the roti. That is one of God's gifts to mankind. That is That combination is outstanding. And there was a place in Leiden where I did my PhD, Suriname's Roti House. <clears throat> we sometimes go there for lunch. Or I would do takeout. It was a tiny place, you know, this place, a little home, all like tiny. I think they had the two or three little tables, you know. And it was just the type of place where they have the food, and then they just warm it up in a microwave and they give it to you. Um, and it was fantastic. It was delicious, absolutely delicious. One of my favorite things, honestly. 
I have a 3776, love the nib, but it's too small. I don't like its plastic feel. Do you know if there's someone, a company that I could buy a nicer body from or have one custom made for the nib unit? Purchase? No. Because I think those are proprietary nibs, so I don't think you'd be able to find another company that fits a platinum nib very easily. Custom made? Yeah, many. Sean Newton does it. Um, I don't know if Ryan Cruz I could do it, um, but but Sean Newton comes to mind for sure. Shop around, custom pen makers galore, and you will find someone who can who can uh, help you out and do that for you. Yeah. If you like the cold, you're in the perfect place. I'm happy to have escaped the cold of Wisconsin. Enjoy your winter. We're going into summer. Yeah, it's interesting. I was finding interesting the flipped world thing, but uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, winter no cold. Cold for me. Cold is for me. It works. Uh, it's dangerous. That's interesting. It's dangerous not learning writing cursive. The founding documents of several, if not most, English countries are written. Yeah, that's actually a good point. And in general, I, I remember someone once told me the story of she was writing in cursive and some kid next to her asked, what language is that? Because they don't recognize cursive anymore. Uh, this is what I mean. Like, we're old. We're old. We're the old guard. And it's okay. But this is how it is. It's a whole new generation that does all kinds of things. I don't want to complain, but these days when I say something in class like Facebook, people look at me like, Facebook? Dude, it's old, man. That's not the thing anymore. Gotta be this goal. Anyway, um, yeah, that's tough. Just saying. Many people tell me it's too bad people don't write letters anymore. I love to educate them about the fairly large letter writing com community. Yeah, and there's, of course, Inco Rimo, um, the in International Correspondent Writing Month in February, where you can write a letter to people one, one, one a day every day. I think that was the one letter a day every day, one a day every day. I think that was the motto. Erica Rosco does that. So we'll see in February if that will be uh, up again. But yeah, yeah. It's very good. And it's fun. Writing letters is fun. Uh, it's my favorite too. Roti kip, ja, een kouseband. If you don't, if you know, you know. If you don't know what we're talking about, I pity you. Then you have not experienced true, proper cuisine. Curry chicken, kouseband is a type of green bean, arco ver, but they're Huge. You cut them up. You make that curry. You know, roti is uh, like a, a, a flatbread, right? But really, it's not not risen. It's it's almost like a almost like a like a pancake, but it's not sweet. And you you can put split peas in it and such, and, and curry and, and oh god, it's delicious. Getting hungry again. Love the Canadian landscapes. What's your view on spirituality and mindfulness? How do you relate it to writing? To writing. Um, For me, spirituality is something that you find anywhere, but I don't know if I, if I really connect it to religion. Uh, to me, it's something else. Uh, this is also going to sound like, like a really cliched thing to say, but for me, you can have very spiritual encounters walking around on a snowy morning, or, or you can have a spiritual encounter stepping into a, a, an old medieval cathedral. But you can also have a very spiritual encounter listening to certain music. It doesn't have to be religious music. It can be any music. It puts you in touch with something that I'm not saying is a divine thing, but something in within yourself. And, and that, I think, can be a very powerful experience. And in that regard, I suppose writing can also do that. The, the very strong focus on, on what you are doing can be, in my mind, very spiritual. Speaking of letter writing, did you get your card? I'm so sorry. Yes, I did. I didn't even thank you. But yes, I did, Jenny, and I appreciated it. Thank you. Uh, same, read Japan. I'm surprised at the love for sailor nibs, though, frankly. They have that 
tactility toothiness that's very different from the other hot butter and glass of broad euro nibs. It, it is, but I, I find myself gravitating more towards nibs that actually have a little bit of feedback. Not to say scratchy, but I mean a little bit of feedback. I'm starting to find that actually very pleasant and I'm, I'm really enjoying that kind of writing, uh, that kind of writing experience. Yeah, I don't need the ultra glossy smooth nibs. That was what I reached for earlier. It's a fine line between that and skipping. So I found that a little bit of feedback can actually be very pleasant for me and for the way I write. I am teaching my fourth and fifth grade students course of this year. My coworker is teaching her younger ones. It's coming back. Well, that's actually really nice. I think it's really, yeah, yeah. It's really good, really good. I have been following you for the last 10 years. You got me interested in fountain pens and I won't write with anything else. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the loyal viewership. I guess I'm one of the weird old ones. I hate cursive. Out! No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's useless to me. I've become so lazy, I don't even sign my name. I just scribble and nobody checks. Well, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, some people really love print. I, I know fountain pen users who only print. It's fine. I... I my cursive used to be terrible, it's still two degree is, but, but it's become much better to two degree that I like it. I like my handwriting now, I didn't like it before. So for me, cursive is really nice, but yeah, it's not for everyone. That's fine, right? Oh, that's a really good suggestion. Flexible nib factory makes a Jovo or Bock housing for 3776 nibs. So try that out. Then you can put your, pen, your nib on another pen. Thank you, that's a really good suggestion. I always forget about these guys, but yeah, that's a really cool company. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. You may already be gone, but thank you. Thank you. Uh... Hello, Jude. How are you doing? I think feedback also helps me control the pen easier. My writing suffers when the nib is very smooth. Yeah, and as I said, you, you get it's easier to get skipping and such, and that's just unpleasant. Yeah. I managed to catch up. So what do I have coming up in ways of reviews? Well, clearly the Archie's notebooks. Um, I have that, I have those two interesting Salem, uh, sorry, Pelican nibs that I've shown you. I have to uh, do the review of this because I do find this a very interesting pen. It's actually, to me, it's very comfortable that, that, that William Shakur pen, uh, 3D printed. I want to add my LB6 to my personal pen videos because I have it now. I have the nib. The nib came back from Mike Masayama, so it's a very nice writer now. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot more. I have videos planned for weeks, so I mean, there's a lot of time. Um, what do we have currently? We have videos planned. I have videos planned still November 25th. Time flies though, especially when you're having fun. So I've got to make sure I keep them coming. Yeah, I'll show you this. <clears throat> I really like the, uh, the nib imprint that William does now. I like that circle. It's cool. Titanium broad, ebonite feed. Nice, isn't it? And the 3D printed material looks really cool. I like it. <clears throat> but that's just me. It's fun, isn't it? Useful little thing. All right. Here's what I think. I think it's getting late. So I thank you all for watching. I say, <clears throat> as I say every time, <clears throat> To those people who say, is there anything we can do to support you? Well, if you want to, patreon.com slash sberebrown, you can support me there for as little as a dollar a month. You don't have to. I love you just as much if you don't. But if you say, 
I really wish there was something I could do for SBA Ray Brown. Well, that's something you could do for SBA Ray Brown. That's pretty much it. I hope this was interesting, entertaining, uh, made your, your, your weekend start off properly. And that's it. I'll see you again soon. Hang around. I mean, see you around. That's what I'm trying to say. Not hang around because I'm leaving, but, but see you around. <laughs>